Stripe allows you to accept credit card payments over the phone in a mail order and telephone order environment, but there is a catch. You have to enable the feature because as I'm gonna show you in this video, Stripe says that creating charges through the dashboard is a restricted feature. So I'm gonna show you how the Stripe virtual terminal works, how to run a transaction and basic functionality, and then I'll point you to that fine print that I'm referencing and let you know what Stripe says about the proper way to use it. So stay tuned, we'll get into all of that coming up. So a virtual terminal is simply a web-based portal that you can use to process credit cards. Once you're logged into Stripe, you'll find a create button on the right menu at the top. And if you click on that, you'll see that there's four options and we're going to cover the virtual terminal or payment option as it's listed. So that's what we'll choose. In order to select the payment option, you'll click on it with your mouse or you can use the hotkeys that are available. In order to get to the payment screen by using the hotkeys so you can run a single payment you'll just click C and then P in that order on your keyboard and the payments tab or the virtual terminal will launch in order for the hotkeys to work as shown you just need to make sure that stripe is open and make sure that the home or payment screen are the active tab on your web browser and again the hotkeys will work so you can choose the one time or recurring payments and right now we're going to go through the one-time option the single payment option if you click recurring button it'll take you to the subscriptions tab and that'll be covered in a different video so check the links in the description enter the amount that you want to charge and then click the customer box to find your customer in order to bill if it's a brand new customer you've never done business with you can just click the add new option right here at the top and enter the customer in the virtual terminal screen if you have customers Customers entered already you'll be able to search their name and results will auto suggest for you to choose from if you select a customer you've previously charged you'll notice that the customer's card auto populates at the bottom giving you an option to charge that card on file but before we get to the payments methods section enter a description that simply indicates what the charge is for the statement descriptor on the next line and as the help icon indicates here this is the business name that your customer Customers are going to see on their credit card statements when they receive their bill finally the payment method there's three options number one is to manually enter the credit card information you'll choose this option obviously if you're charging a new customer as I said or if you want to add a card to an existing customer you can enter the card number the month the expiration date the CVC code on the back of the card the three digit code you have the option to save that card to the customer or save card to customer by checking this box so that if you want to charge future purchases you can do that if you click the more options drop down you have an option to capture funds at a later date you'd use this if you want to reserve funds for a particular purchase that's going to be within the seven days as indicated and if you elect to use this option you're simply authorizing the credit card and you have to come back at a later date to complete the capture in order to get paid so it's a two-step process you also have the option to add a billing address and if you have it it is best practice to enter it because as stated right here it could help with the authorization rates finally sending a receipt to your customer after they've paid you is also best practice so you can change this if you'd like to omit sending the receipt but I would suggest doing that and on a quick side note it's my guess that stripes algorithm sees your account as more secure if you leave this option check so that you send your customer a receipt and if you just think about about it logically every payment service provider wants to reduce the possibility of chargebacks and fraud and charging someone's card and then immediately notifying the customer that you did so is more favorable than just charging the card and not letting the customer know they just simply find out about it on their monthly bill manually entering credit card information is the traditional virtual terminal option and I'm gonna swing back around to this at the end because this is what stripe addresses on their website Website with the fine print that I referenced at the beginning of the video. 
So on to number two, the second option to bill through the virtual terminal with Stripe is to send your customer an invoice with a hosted link to pay. You can enter the number of days that the invoice would be due. And if you want to turn this request for payment into an invoice, then you can click the open the invoice editor and a new page will open. I'm going to cover the invoice functionality in a different video because there's additional options that you can make to the invoice. So if you want to see that, be sure to check the links in the description. And the third way is to charge a card that you have previously stored on file. So charging a card on file is just what it sounds like. So you don't need to re-enter the credit card. Just make sure that you select the correct credit card that's stored on file for your customer with the drop-down box. And once you select it, you're ready to charge the card. The drop-down menu would show multiple cards to charge if you have more than one card attached to a single customer. So if they've given you more than one form of payment or more than one credit card to charge, you have the same option as manually entering the card to capture funds later. After you've selected one of these three options that we just covered, you'll click the submit payment button in the right top corner and you'll immediately get a payment successful screen and some buttons to view the details of the transaction and the receipt. The view receipt comes up in a light box and the view details opens in a new tab so you can see all the details of the transaction that you just performed. This payment then is going to be logged in your transaction history and automatically set to settle out to your bank account in the time that that's designated by your Stripe account. That's typically a couple of days to settle out and it will show up then once again in your bank account. Finally, the fine print that I mentioned at the beginning of this video regarding Stripe virtual terminal payments that no one really ever talks about too much, but is important and is listed. And to help me explain this, I'm just gonna reference directly from the Stripe support tab and I'll put this link in the description as well. So at the time of making this video, Stripe states manually creating payments through the dashboard must only be performed when there are exceptional circumstances preventing you from using your own integration. It cannot be, meaning the virtual terminal, your primary method of processing payments on your account. So basically Stripe is telling you that, hey, this is a backup option. Please only use this virtual terminal if you have to, if it's the only option. But otherwise, we would rather you integrate with a payment software or some other software solution that allows you to enter the information directly into that other software, not Stripe, the other software, or one that allows your customers to enter their credit card information directly into another software in, in order to make the payment. Okay, so it, it it's they're actually deterring you a little bit away from using the direct type it into the virtual terminal by, uh, you know, just way of using the straight up virtual terminal option. They'd rather you go through an integration process. So if you're brand new to using Stripe, just know that right here on this link, they're actually telling you that the virtual terminal should not be used as the primary method of processing payments. If you've been using Stripe for a while and you've stumbled across this video, my question is, did you know this? I'm actually curious. Did you know that this was listed in the, in, in the support tab on the Stripe page? So leave me a comment in the description if you did or didn't, or you have other thoughts on, on uh, the interpretation of this, this virtual terminal usage. And with that, check the Stripe playlist at the end of this video. There will be other links for different components and different parts of Stripe, as I mentioned. So if you want to see those videos, check the links and, and it'll be linked up in the description. If you learned something new here, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for being here and thanks for watching. We publish uh, information about payment integrations, merchant accounts, all things related to electronic payments. So if you want more of that, hit the subscribe button so you and, and the bell notification so you get notified when we release new videos. Until the next one, I'm Brian Manning. I'll talk to you soon.